Howdy, partner. The grand finale from our Budget Bow Showdown. Bear Alaskan XT vs. Dart and Consequence. Who will remain the winner after today? Let's dig in, let's find out, and let's get it. I really left our last video feeling like we had two very strong candidates, and I didn't really know how to decide which one to pick. Let's come to the whiteboard here real quick. Here's kind of the selection criteria I wanted to go through with you guys to figure out who's gonna come up our winner. Speed features build quality, forgiveness, cost, shoot the bows a little more, figure out what we figure out. You have anything to add to that? No, I think those are good things. To how are we gonna make that selection? <sighs> very, very carefully. <laughs> I just feel it is a very much toss up, I think, personally, but hey. Yeah, it feels very much like a toss up to me as well. Let's just go through it, shoot them off side by side, get, collect some more data, and uh, see who comes out on top. Guys, this is Josh's man cave, by the way. This is literally a part of my house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what else does he have in there? Oh, there's some seltzers in there, some beer, some soda, some snacks. Sponsored by Keystone, is that who you're sponsored by? Boy, I don't think they sponsor anybody, <laughs> but if they did, I'd, I'd apply. <laughs> Darn consequence. Give them the highlights real quick if well, they catch the up from it, last week. It's the favorite in the clubhouse, and it's the people's favorite at the moment. And I don't know if it's just because Darton's kind of making a comeback and nobody has heard him heard it for a while or what. But also the most expensive. It is more expensive. It absolutely is. And the the argument last time was that they didn't cut any corners at this price point. Normally, when you get down to this price point, you'll see something that they did to try to make this bow cheaper. And with the exception of like integration. Yep. which it doesn't have integration. It kind of has everything else. It's got a, a shim adjustable cam system, yoke adjustable cam system. You can do both pivoting module. And like I said, they don't, they didn't cut any corners. Quarter inch axles, wide limb pocket stand. Aluminum limb pockets. like Seven and a half inch brace height. Yep. Like if you're new, that's the kind of bow you should buy. Something that's really forgiving. So you have a good experience and you don't end up kind of frustrated with it. Sure. As far as how the cam rolls over, very smooth. Yep. None of the Humpty Dumpty stuff, no, yeah. It's a well-designed cam. Yeah. Five-star grip, shooting off that riser feels really nice, really nice. This is why I'm having a hard time deciding is because I, I like a lot about that. So let's That's get a, the bear. It's a great bow, man. Immediately, if you just took this out of eyes glance and you looked at them side by side and you like went over and saw how they looked, this one looks more heavy duty than it this does. one. There's like a little more built like a tankness quality here. Mm -hmm. This one, it doesn't feel like anything's chintzy or plastic, but this looks higher quality. Yeah. From here to here, yeah. which is a legit aluminum limb pocket, wide limb stance and quarter inch ax axles, which that doesn't have. Yeah. The, this assembly here, versus this assembly here, personally, no offense to Bear, they don't compare. Yeah. This is a way better built limb and limb pocket assembly than yeah. that. It's not like it's gonna have something wrong with it, but this is built beefier from here to here. This has a few more features though. Picatinny rail, stuff like that. A few more of those like modern integrations. Integrate rest, Picatinny yeah. rail, nice pluses. If I were just to go side by side with the grip, side by side with the cam, that grip, just maybe a half a point higher. I like it. This cam doesn't have any crazy dump, but it does have like a little, almost like there's a little friction in the beginning of the pull. It's just not pulling as smoothly in the beginning of the pull. And it almost feels like one of them's coming back on a real smooth ball bearing, and the other one's got like a hair of friction there. That could actually have to do with this versus this. That would make sense to me. Actually. It does feel a little more which traditionally that is a cheaper thing, but the bow is also less expensive. Mm -hmm. Our goal was best build we could make under $1,000. I think if you were to go to the next price point down, I don't think you and I could compete and build something better than the bear ready to hunt adapt plus. Do you sure. agree with that? Yeah, I do. There's a, there's a pretty significant difference between that bow and yeah. these bows though. So, I mean, if you're, if you're in that price point, I, I don't know how you touch that bow. Yeah, I don't know how you beat it. And that's why nice. if this was out of your price point, I would go to that. That's a great ready to hunt type package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good unit. Yeah. 
I do like how this riser feels at full draw. Let's full get draw. you guys a side profile real quick here. Okay, so that's your real equivalent side profile. You've got a pretty significant difference down. Yeah, pros and cons to both, right? A little bit of length, maybe more pleasing, a little bit less length, maybe more mobile, maybe more nimble, maybe it fits in smaller spaces. Higher brace height. <laughs> <laughs> Way to sell it. <laughs> Higher brace height, a little more forgiving. Yeah. Let's go arrow for arrow and we'll throw some scores on the scoreboard. Arrow for arrow, back to back. Let's get it. That's totally what you're describing, by the way. That little bit of friction is that. Yeah, it's that roller guard. Yeah. I mean, it's better than a plastic slide, but it's still, it's got grit and resistance. So you can feel it. Whereas that would be smoother. This is smoother coming back. I, I can't argue that. A little more forward explosion out of that bow coming out of the hand, which I don't mind. Let's tally up some scores and see where we rank up. We know from last week, speed very similar. I'm gonna stick on a scale of one to five, five being the best. I think for the price point and the amount of speed we're getting, could be faster, but the speeds are pretty good. So I'm gonna go four and four. Features, bear with the Picatinny rail, bear with the integrate rest, feature to feature. This one's better. I'm gonna go four here, three here. Build quality. Now, I think this is where Darton separates itself a little bit from the bear if I'm comparing them side by side. Just feels like a high quality bow, something that will hold up longer as far as parts, fit, feel. And I really think for the price point, I think it's a home run, I think it's a five. I don't think this feels cheap or looks cheap. I'm gonna keep it at a four. Forgiveness. This is where brace height, MFJJ's measure of reflex really come into the equation, how much a bow can be forgiving. Seven and a half inch brace height. We don't really see bows made of that much brace height anymore. So on the forgiveness scale, home run, gotta be a five. For what we see modern bows built at, most of them are around a six and a half inch brace height. Bears right there. I'm gonna keep it out of four. And cost. Darton, 649, 529, plus 120 clams in the budget. Very cost effective bow, five. Very great bow for what you're getting, just costs a little more. Four, seven, 17, 21, eight, 16, 21, freaking tie. This is the problem with those two bows. They're, they're so close. I really don't know how to decide. I wanna talk with Josh really quick. I'm kind of thinking out loud here. So here's where my head's at. Do we do the unthinkable and do what is the most pain in the ass to do and build them both? I honestly think that would be a great opportunity to have a Western and Eastern style bow comparison. If your interest is in shooting things farther away or running and gunning that type of hunting, you know, you'd, you'd probably be drawn more towards the bear. If your interest was tree stand ground blind, like a lot of hunters do, you'd probably be drawn more towards the dart. And so it would be kind of neat to have both of them built and then see what that extra you know, 120 bucks gets you as far as an option to set up. Try to find the value that way, but I think it'd be perfect to make both of them. We don't know what we don't know. And this is the part of a bow build test that always, we're shooting from five yards, we're trying to do our best with feel, fit, features, stuff like that. But to really build it, to really shoot it, and maybe the darn does shoot well from 80 or 100 yards. It could, no, I don't, we should have that comparison. And I don't know until we test, and right. that could be cool. So are you in for that? We build them both. <laughs> we're gonna do it. I think um, we will build them both. It'll be great. It'll be fun to test them on a more detailed scale. How do we decide which one gets built first? Let's coin flip it. Let's coin, coin flip, flip it. Okay, let's coin flip it. When, anytime I have to make a big decision in my life, if, if it's 50-50, trust flip the coin. coin. We'll test the coin. You got a coin? All right, big coin flip here. MFJ is gonna be our coin flip guy. Heads will build the bear. Tails will build the darton. Flip it. Oh, okay, what okay, all right. We get, pull it out. Pull it out. Pull it on the light, pull it on the light. Tails. Okay. Shebang. That's the tails, darting it is. Let's go. We're gonna go down to the shop, do a little shopping, pick out the best components we can pick with our budget, and uh, we'll build it up. Boning quiver, 20 bucks. 
Trophy Ridge Propel Drop Away Limb Driven, 99. Black Gold Ascent Whitetail Slider, 209. Podium 12 inch bar. Podium offset bar, 40 clams. And this is what I shot before. Dart and Consequence, tan color, black limbs. I think it's pretty slick. I think it's very slick. I'm excited to build it and shoot it, yeah. She looked good. Let's get some parts on it. It was time to make this bow come to life. As a career-long archery shop owner, who knows how many thousands of bows Josh has really built. I feel very fortunate to have him guide me through this process and help along the way. We put on the stabilizers. We put on the sight. We leveled the sight. Mounted the rest. Leveled the rest. All the little intricacies that goes into building a bow the right way. So tuning doesn't become a major issue later. And we want to be able to rely on our hunting equipment. It's very important that these things don't fall apart. So shout out to Josh for doing a great job building it. As we were building it, we were talking about, is this a thing that should be on the website? Would you all be interested in having something like this pre-built at Spokane Valley Archery and able to ship? Now, if you have a chance and are able to go try and buy one at your local archery shop, that's very cool. The reality of the situation is not everyone's gonna be able to do that, so to be able to order one online and have it shipped to your door is a cool idea. If you like the thought of that, let us know down below in the comments. Very curious to hear your feedback and happy to have this thing built. And coming up next, a real test. We got all the goodies on here. Now we got paper, tune, peep. So we're gonna get a quick run through paper and um, see what we see, see how this thing comes from the factory. I need a little love, I think. Knock, point. We did end up moving the shim, one shim over, but tell them about the system. It's a shim system, right? All right, yeah, so there's uh, red ones and black ones in here. The black one is one big piece, and then there's two smaller red ones, and we moved just one over from this side to this side to try to get rid of that little left to right, and so now let's see if we actually got rid of it or not. Roll them, roll them, Lou, roll them. hey, we be rolling. Okay, test tune fire. Ignore the peep. For a brand new bow to you, that's pretty good, man. It looks good. Still got it. Bow's built, tuned, shooting a bullet hole, and I uh, just wanted to get a final chrono check for our sight tape and just to see what this bow's shooting. Two eighty four. That'll give us a good starting point for our sight tape. And what Josh Jones doesn't know is we're gonna go QC his work. That stands for quality check, Josh Jones. We're gonna go do a quality check. We're gonna shoot this thing from 100 yards, see how many arrows it takes us to blow up a balloon. Budget bow, 100 yards, let's go. Fighting the weather a little bit to get this shot done, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna get this 100 yard balloon popped and uh, hopefully I can do it sooner than later. Cause it'll, it's right on the verge of raining or snowing or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna get this balloon in. You good? We're recording. Guys, shout out to my guy Mike here. <laughs> What's up? We're gonna get Mike in a video shooting with his ball real quick. We're absolutely fighting the weather, so we're gonna shoot as fast as possible. Try to pop a balloon because electronics and rain don't mix. Let's we got get snow it. coming in too. This is like a mixture. 
<laughs> We're gonna try it. We gotta try it. Okay. I believe in you. You ready? Did you see that hit? It was a good break. High. High? Yep. Number two. Oh, it hit quite a bit left, eh? High left. Okay. Still high. Yeah. Quite a bit left, though? Yep. Where I see it. Oh, God. Man, that was a good break. It's like the balloon just dodged it or something. Yeah, well, it's a moving balloon. Let's get her done, you believe? I believe, dude. All right. The wind might not make you believe. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta believe. Gotta believe. Oh! Did you so watch close. that arc? Yes. That looks so good. That's just a hair low, right? <laughs> oh, oh so the left close, right was dude. so good. Here I go, we're down there. Hi again. Okay, we're gonna get it done. Next round of shots. That's what they look like. My camera fell over. Next round. Rest in peace, we only have five arrows now. And uh, <laughs> The wind does not help with your hold. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get it done in these five arrows. That was a perfect break. You're an inch left of it. Okay. But height was okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, that was good too. Ooh. Looked like it was turning left again. Mm. Maybe that hit high. Inch above. Really? Yep. You're pinning that balloon in one spot. <sighs> Let's get it. left. Yep. And low? Did you yeah, see it? A little bit, but you had a lot of rain on that arrow. Yeah. Left. Man, it looked good. It's just a touch left. I got to hold right. We got it surrounded is what you're saying? You got it surrounded, dude. Okay. Final arrow of this batch. I'm feeling the flow. Just feeling the flow. Feeling, feeling the flow, riding the bull. On the left side, right? I don't know. I think we have our elevation, and I'm just trending left. Mike's real good at working on bows. He's gonna bump my side a touch to the left because we're fighting this rain and we got to get it done. Dang, that was close. Here we go. <laughs> White balloon versus budget bow. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, we're just getting sighted in. All we really did was set a 20. I set a 20, I didn't mess with anything. So we're out here winging it. Oh, that was left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shade right on this one. You gotta be right above it. What'd that do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was tracking, dude. Absolutely tracking. Yeah, just above. Just above. It would be left side of the so balloon. So I shaded right. So, okay. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Dude. Nice. Thank you for hanging out in the rain with me. Of course. Guys, electronics and rain don't mix. Subscribe to the channel. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. We're out here filming in the rain. It's not a great day for this. To get these guys the good content. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I hope you appreciate it. More to come in the Budget Bow series. We will catch you back for the next one. Yeah. Oh. Dude.